job done fast. When you have a pest problem, look for a Bradley display in a store near you. Bradley Exterminating Products. They work for exterminators, they'll work for you. Available at White Bear Ace, Coast to Coast, and Egan Ace. After 20 years in the tire business, it takes a lot to impress me. But here's the tire that has the whole industry excited. It's the new Matrix all-weather steel-belted radial. The Matrix is simply a superior tire with a unique tread design that exceeded every government test. Matrix guarantees excellent traction, handling, and tread wear for a safer, smoother, quieter ride. Best of all, it costs less. See the new Matrix at Twin City Tire, 494 at Lindale in Richfield. The Jerry Lewis Labor Day Telethon, starting Sunday. My name's Michael, and we're at the State Fair. And From the Twin Cities Action Center, News 11 Sunrise, your new choice for news. Good morning, it's Friday, August 29th. I'm Mary Stuckey. And I'm Dennis Stauffer. We have a very nice, clear, cool morning out there today, so let's check in with Roy Finden and see what's happening. Good morning, Roy. Well, you know what's happening. You just said it. It's clear and cool. Exactly <laughs> right. It's 48 degrees. Looks like it's going to be uh, an adorable day, and uh, prospects for a lot of the weekend are pleasant. We'll share them all in just a minute or two. Of course I knew. I just wanted your endorsement. Thank <laughs> okay. you. Roy. Topping sunrise. Early this morning, one person was shot and another stabbed in downtown Minneapolis. The two incidents happened within blocks and minutes of each other. They were both near bars. According to Minneapolis police, bar closing time is a time when there are lots of problems. Overnight, Minneapolis police went through a couple of tough hours. To death, man. Minneapolis police had their hands full overnight as they tried to take care of a shooting victim and control a crowd inside city center. At the same time, police were trying to determine exactly what happened. The shooting occurred on Hennepin Avenue near Moby Dix. The victim apparently went inside city center for help. He was rushed to Hennepin County Medical Center, and this morning he is in serious condition. One suspect was taken into custody. Police were just wrapping up at the shooting when another call came out. Just around the corner at the First Avenue nightclub, police responded to a stabbing involving a member of a band playing there. The victim was stabbed inside, but still able to walk to an ambulance. This morning, police are still looking for a suspect. Downtown was busier than usual last night, but patrons lingering on the avenue after bar closing time is nothing new. Police have come to know it, they say, as a breeding ground for trouble and violence. For Sunrise, Carolyn Mirren, News 11, downtown Minneapolis. Richfield firefighters were busy overnight. They were called to battle a smoky fire at 77th and Colfax around 1.30. A house being prepared to be moved caught on fire. According to fire officials, the fire began in the attic and spread to the roof. Investigators say the origin of the fire looked suspicious. There were no injuries reported. Despite efforts to stop it, the Williams Pipeline in Mounds View is moving closer to reopening. Workers replaced part of the pipe that ruptured last month. Despite safety concerns, the company plans to begin tests on the line in several weeks. Among those watching the work, Don Spano, who lost his wife and daughter in the explosion. I just feel that uh, by them opening up this hole, it just opens up a whole, uh, reopens uh, the wound that everybody in this neighborhood is making an attempt to heal. A Blaine man chained himself to the pipe to protest its reattachment. He was cut free by police. His actions delayed the work for only an hour. And funeral services will be held in Ivanhoe this morning for three members of the Donald Gertz family. Donald Gertz died when he tried to rescue his two sons from their burning house this past Tuesday. Services will be held at St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church in Ivanhoe at 10 this morning. The Minnesota State Supreme Court has handed down a decision concerning a controversial criminal case. And in another ruling, the state has sided with an Anoka County teacher. Amy Powell has more on the Supreme Court's decisions. A ruling filed by the Minnesota Supreme Court today means that a man previously acquitted of eight counts of first-degree murder will not have to go through another trial. Or 
Orville Skip Burnt was convicted three years ago in the arson deaths of his wife and three sons. He was released from prison in March of this year after the Supreme Court reversed the convictions because of insufficient evidence. Today, the court ruled against the state on a petition for a rehearing, stating, We feel Skip Burnt is innocent and the state is guilty. The Supreme Court also ruled in favor of the Anoka County School Board's decision to put a teacher on an unrequested leave of absence. Rachel Blank had contested the leave of absence, saying that she had more seniority than other staff teachers. The school board claimed that Blank did not meet seniority requirements. The court said that because Blank did not challenge the seniority list, she was precluded from contesting the forced leave. For Sunrise, Amy Powell, News 11. Invergrove Heights teachers and board members worked into the early morning hours. The two sides adjourned around 12.30 this morning without reaching any new contractual agreement. Another meeting has been scheduled to resume talks for Monday. Both sides have been negotiating for the past 15 months. The major stumbling block is a seniority issue. And an end of an era is coming today. The hundred twin drive-in movie theaters in Fridley will fall to the wrecking ball. The two back-to-back 50-foot -back movie screens will make way for a new $65 million office complex. Completion of the new building is expected by the spring of 1987. And a downtown Minneapolis landmark is having a birthday this morning. The Fauché Tower is celebrating its 57th anniversary. For years, the tower was the tallest skyscraper and gave Minneapolis its distinguishing skyline. To celebrate the occasion, a dozen trombone players and hundreds of balloons will fill the Fauché's halls. We have Roy Finden here with a look at the weather, which I understand is going to be fairly nice. Yes, I'm, I'm still thinking about a dozen trombone players in the Hall of Fauché. <laughs> I like that. It'll be really, Exciting, really, yeah. really nice. Yes, a fine, 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 fine day. At the moment, it's 48 degrees. It's nicely clear outside. Just a little southerly wind, southerly wind at just 8 miles per hour. The dew point temperature is 44 degrees. Relative humidity is 86 percent. And the pressure is at 30.02. The pressure is falling. Now, the temperatures around the area this morning show a nice consistency. The readings are largely in the 40s. There are a couple of your little fugitive, uh, well, a 34 up at Hibbing to uh, break uh, the pattern. 50s down here, La Crosse and, and Eau Claire, but otherwise temperatures are in the 40s. That suggests a fairly consistent weather pattern. Confirmed, consistent, a free of fronts morning. No particular fronts in our area. The center of high pressure has moved off to the east. We are expecting just a dandy combination of 70-degree readings in Minnesota and 80s further to the west. The specifics of the forecast for today include mostly sunny with 70 to 75 for a high and southerly winds of from 5 to 10 miles per hour. And for tonight, clear 54 to 58 with more southerly winds. And for tomorrow, mostly sunny and 75 to 80 degrees with more southerly winds. And then as the weekend approaches, we expect a chance of evening showers Sunday, chance of showers on Labor Day. But that's a couple days away, so we'll see what happens. But boy, today and tomorrow, dandy. Not, not much to complain about. Nope. Sounds more like summer again. You bet. Good. Thanks, Roy. Coming up, a major automaker drops its financing rates. And two banks from different states are working on an unusual plan. That and more up next in our business report. This is it, the sale we have only once a year at Hopkins Dodge. 200 used cars and trucks, $3 million in inventory must be sold. Here's how. Every model shown on the screen, under $100 a month. The 84 Colt, only $89 a month. Here's another group specially priced under $5,000. Plus a special purchase of Lincoln Town Cars and Continentals. 200 used cars and trucks must be sold. This is a public sale on the spot financing. Dealers welcome, the price is the same. Only at Hopkins Dodge. Sale ends Monday at 9 p.m. Such a sensation in his blue jeans. Such a t -t -t temptation, if you know what I mean. Making me crazy till I'm just about gone. Is it what he's got going or what he's got on? Lee, the love, the lovely sensation. Lee. Get a hot slice of Godfather's pizza and a soft drink with every Lee Jean from United. When the jeans are on you, the lunch is on us at the United Stores. Today, there's a dealership where Toyota Value comes equipped with the feature you all want most, the lowest price. Over 200 new Toyota cars, trucks, and vans, discounted 300, 500, 1,000, up to $2,000 off the manufacturer's suggested retail price. 
Not a dealer inflated price. You don't want to play games? We don't either. For immediate delivery and the lowest price on over 200 Toyotas, see Minnesota's largest, Wilkins Toyota, University in Lexington, today. And at 6.09, in the first half of this year, the United States imported nearly $84 billion more in goods than it exported. That has members of the Federal Reserve Board concerned. Board Chairman Paul Volcker says the trade deficit is the single greatest threat to U.S. economic growth and could trigger a recession by the end of this year. That sounds like bad news, but we'll have to wait and see. What do you do if you own about one million cars too many? Well, you start to wheel and deal, just like General Motors. Kara King is here with more on that. Kara, hi. Hi. Good morning, you guys. Um, the new incentives General Motors is offering seems to be bringing the customers in. The staff at a local GM dealership was busier than normal after announcing its 2.9% financing program. Sales representatives say they have already noticed an increase of on-the-spot sales, and the new financing program is offered on 1986 cars only. In our business outlook, the first Minnesota Savings Bank in Minneapolis and Metropolitan Financial Corporation of Fargo, North Dakota are considering becoming one banking company. The board of directors say they are only considering the proposal and have no plans to merge in the immediate future. This morning, Frontier Airlines is still looking for buyers. The airline filed for bankruptcy protection yesterday in Denver. The Eastman Kodak Company is eliminating 185 jobs in its clinic products division. The company is best known for its production of photographic supplies and is finding it difficult to make a profit producing blood analyzers. Kodak officials say they need to double their current volume of sales or they may have to eliminate manufacturing the product completely. The opening bell on Wall Street is just a few hours away. The Dow Jones will open at 1900.17. The Dow's previous day's trading backed off from a run at an all-time record high. The Dow closed down 4.36 on the day. If you're planning on moving in the near future, you should take into consideration what impact the new proposed tax law will have on your new living arrangements. Janet Mason takes a closer look at a few of those considerations. Perhaps the biggest single expense for most Americans is housing, so there are changes in the tax bill you should know about. If you're planning a job-related move, try to do it this year. Next year, there will probably be restrictions on deductions of moving expenses. Changes in the tax law will hurt landlords, so they'll probably raise rents. In some cases, the increase might make it better to buy a house rather than rent. If you need to borrow money for medical or educational purposes, you might want to borrow against your house. Under the new plan, that's the only way you can deduct the interest. And if you're buying a house, consider a shorter 15-year mortgage. You'll pay less interest, and the interest deductions won't be worth as much under the new bill. Of course, you'll still get a tax deduction for interest on your house and on a second residence like a vacation home. Those deductions even tax reformers wouldn't dare touch. Janet Mason, News 11. And the end of the year is so near to get all this, take advantage of this. A lot of information to absorb. Thanks, Thanks Kara. Kara. Thanks, Kara. Now, if you're not interested in housing as an investment, there are still alternatives that can prove to be profitable, as money reporter Steve Crowley reports. Uh, you're done, you're complete. Mutual funds okay, are bulging with new business, not so much from investors looking to ride the stock market, but from savers looking to earn 9% plus in corporate bonds and Ginnie Mae funds, when all the banks will pay them is from 5 to 9%. And most bank savers are leaning towards short-term accounts. They don't want to lock their dollars away for years, afraid that inflation and higher savings rates might come back. This makes sense. Bank economist Don Steelman. For the short term, we don't think interest rates are going to do a lot one way or the other. They might go up, they might go down, but there's not going to be a lot of change. Now, if you're asking me to, to extend this forecast for five years, 10 years, 30 years, now we're getting a little bit risky. With interest rates down low, money funds are more popular than ever now. So a lot of customers would prefer to have that liquidity available to them. The spread between the long term and short term has been reduced significantly. So people like putting it in the short term because it's always available if they should need it. Income mutual funds do pay higher rates, but there is a risk factor. The investment itself can drop in value. A $1,000 bond fund can turn into $900 or $1,100 while it's earning interest. The price fluctuates. Today, corporate bonds are paying from 9 to 12 percent, and Judy May funds yield from 8.5 to 11 percent. Glenn Parker writes the widely read newsletter, Income and Safety. Glenn, a lot of these small investors are using bond funds, long-term bond funds, to generate high yields. That's right. They're using them as a substitute for money funds because the money fund no longer provided them with, provide them with the double-digit yields they've gotten used to. My advice, if you're willing to take on some risk and really want to earn high rates, it's okay to spread your savings among three to five income mutual funds. 
Most require a minimum of from $500 to $2,500. You can buy these through a broker and pay a commission or directly from the fund with little or no commission. To spread your risk, you can split your dollars, some in the bank, some in an income mutual fund. The mix depends on you. Steve Crowley for News 11 Sunrise. If you have any questions for Steve, just drop him a note with a self-addressed stamped envelope to his attention at CARE 11, 8811 Olson Memorial Highway, Minneapolis. The zip is 55427. Still to come this morning on Sunrise, there are still a few days left before the State Fair ends. We'll uh, tell you what's ahead there. And if you've already been to the fair, we'll tell you what movies are worth seeing over the weekend. Also, a big problem for farmers. Looks a little easier this morning. We'll tell you why. And the football season starts tonight for some younger players. That and more when Sunrise continues. Hey, Minnesota, who's making your best Mazda year-end clearance deal? Metro Mazda, $1,000 guaranteed. B2000s, Minnesota's best priced at $55.80 and no money down. 323s and 626s, not stripped. They're fully equipped with no money down. RX-7s, 208 a month. No dealer in St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota will beat Metro's year-end clearance prices. Guaranteed. Metro Mazda St. Paul, your no money down dealer. For over 20 years, Bradley Exterminating Company has been providing quality exterminating services for fine homes, apartments, and businesses. And now due to popular demand, we've also developed a complete line of quality products for the do-it-yourselfer. All Bradley Exterminating products are easy to use and packed with exterminator punch to get the job done fast. When you have a pest problem, look for a Bradley display in a store near you. Bradley Exterminating Products. They work for exterminators, they'll work for you. Available at Stremel Hardware. The Walter Stores again volunteered to be the official dealer sponsor of the Jerry Lewis Telethon. $100 will be donated in your name for every vehicle sold, and you still get the best buys of the year. Final year-end closeout prices on over 2,000 new Buicks, Ford, Chevys, Chryslers, Mazdas, VWs, and more from $55.88. All available with no down payment. Factory financing from 2.9% or up to $1,500 cash. Help yourself to a great deal and help your kids. At all six Walter locations. And the time now is 16 minutes after 6 o'clock. There's still time to get your reels and practice your casting before going fishing this Labor Day weekend. In some parts of Minnesota, fish are already showing signs of fall. Larger fish are getting caught in shallow water. In Alexandria, more big walleye have bitten the hook on Lakes Latoka and Carlos. In Baudette, walleyes are going crazy on Lake of the Woods. And in Fergus Falls, West Battle Lake is the place for walleye and northern. Pete is here, and you tell me kids are nervous this morning. Why is Ooh, that? All across the state, there's <laughs> thousands of uh, high school guys who are all a little nervous about their uh, first football game football coming up tonight. Football already. Football is back, and it's the end of August. <laughs> <laughs> the high school football season gets off to a big bang tonight with games scheduled all around the state. There were several games scheduled yesterday to get that season underway. In the St. Paul City Conference, Hill Murray defeated Humboldt 35 to zip. Como Park edged Highland Park 9-8, and in one other game, Fair Bowl Bethlehem Academy upended Minneapolis Lutheran 37-21. In the Hill Murray Humboldt game, how about a play like this to get your season off on the right foot? Hill Murray's Derek Strobel fields the punt, goes right, heads to the sideline, says, well, there's no room over there, let's go back over to the left. Cuts back and races 69 yards for the touchdown. That's Hill Murray getting off to a great start on the year, 35-0 over Humboldt. And tonight on News 11 at 10 o'clock, we will have our Prep Sports Extra, complete coverage of every Twin Cities football conference and highlights from some of those games. Join Randy Shaver and Tom Ryder for all the scores and highlights. The Vikings will have one final practice and then pack up and leave Mankato today. After five long weeks, training camp comes to an end as the team heads to Indianapolis for tomorrow night's exhibition, final exhibition game. The Vikings and Colts play tomorrow night in the Indianapolis Hoosier Dome. The Vikings season opener is next Sunday at home against Detroit. In action from NFL exhibition games last night, the Jets beat the Eagles 37-20, and the Browns beat the Raiders in Los Angeles 25-22. In that Raiders game, there's less than two minutes to play. The score is tied when Rusty Hilder drops back to pass from his own 10-yard line. I don't know what he was thinking, but he throws an interception to Mark Harper. Now with only nine seconds remaining in the game, Cleveland's Matt Barr kicks his sixth field goal of the night to give Cleveland the win, 25-22. 
Well, the Twins are in Toronto this morning where they will open a three-game series against the Blue Jays this evening. Yesterday, the Twins beat the Brewers in Milwaukee 6-2. The stars in that game were Gary Gaetti and Roy Smalley, who each hit home runs, and pitcher Burt Blylevin, who went the distance in winning his 14th game. Game time in Toronto tonight is 6.30. And in the major leagues yesterday, the National League took the day off while six games were played in the American League. The Blue Jays won their fifth straight, beating Cleveland and former twin Ken Schramm 9-1. Oakland swept the Orioles, winning each game with two out rallies in the ninth inning. Don Sutton got his 307th victory as the Angels beat Detroit. And the White Sox and Steve Carlton beat Texas for the first time in ten games. And the Yankees beat Seattle 4-2. Well, officials at the U.S. Open Tennis Championships hope to get back on schedule this morning after 16 matches were delayed because of rain yesterday. There were no major upsets in the final mat until the final match of the night when Sweden's 11th-seeded Michael Pernfors lost to Russian Andrei Chesnikov in five sets. And, and today in the U.S. Open, Everett Lloyd, Becker, and Connors will all play. Ooh, that'll be good. Thanks, yep. Pete. Thanks, Appreciate Pete. it. Today is Friday, August 29th, and it was at this time 60 years ago that the world's balloon craze hit its peak. The World Balloon Trophy races were held in 1926. In the years before Lindbergh's first transatlantic flight, the annual balloon trophy was a big event. Entrants from all over the world fought for the world's greatest aerial honor. But the glory of balloon racing faded fast. By the mid-1930s, interest in ballooning focused on only a few attempts for altitude records and for scientific research. On this day in 1965, a NASA success. Gemini 5 splashed down into the Atlantic after eight days in space. Astronauts Gordon Cooper and Charles Pete Conrad were aboard. And one year later in San Francisco, the Beatles ended their fourth and last public concert tour in the U.S. 25,000 fans were there to hear rock and roll music and Long Tall Sally. For all of you celebrating your birthdays today, according to your horoscope, next year can bring financial success. A nice thought for actor George Montgomery, who is 70, actor Elliot Gould, who's 48, and singer Michael Jackson, who turns 28 today. And coming up, a chemical that kills weeds may be causing hidden problems for farmers. And a full day of Western fun at the State Fair. We'll be right back. From those who bought last year, to those who will this year. At Burnsville Nissan, our salesman went way out of his way to satisfy our needs, and he gave us a great deal. And there was no fooling around. They just came right to the point, and it was good price. The last time we bought a new car, it took eight hours of bargaining. We walked in here, and I think within about 45 minutes, we were the new owners. It was fun to buy the car here. I would definitely recommend Burnsville Nissan. More pecani sauce. Uh, this ain't Pace pecani sauce. And you ain't Burt Reynolds. But Pace is made with your fresh vegetables and spices by folks in San Antonio. This stuff is made in New York City. New York. Darling, we're going to have to shut you down. Pick up the original. Pick up the Pace. You know, I always love to dance. But when you're over 45 and single, sometimes it's hard to find the right partner. At least I always thought so, until I heard about older is better. And they've introduced me to some very nice gentlemen who like the same things I do. The service is confidential, and it's affordable, and it's worked for thousands of folks so far. Also, you'll feel good about their careful member screening. So why wait? Call older is better right now. The next dance could be yours. Greg, Jake Clyde Chevrolet is having this Labor Day fire sale. Oh, I get it, Ted, because of your hot deals. Hold it right there. J. Klein has just announced 2.9 financing, or rebates to $1,000. Add that to J. Klein's sizzling discounts to $7,000. Now that's reason to have a fire sale. Yeah, but the real reason is if I don't sell 200 cars by 6 o'clock Monday, I'm fired. <laughs> and I'll take we over. We got your wheels, we got your deal at J. Klein Chevrolet. 23 minutes after the hour, the fairgrounds post office addressed a major project involving Twin Cities mailboxes. The first of 3,000 mailboxes in the Twin Cities were given new paint jobs and special added touches. The project is an effort to brighten up the look of the boxes citywide. And Roy Finden is here brightening up our forecast. It's one of those days, well, I could just go on poetically, but the, the, the word to remember for the uh, picture which is to follow is sprawling. 
Huh. I'll explain why that's significant in a minute. Uh, first, let us check the current conditions here in the Twin Cities. Clear and 48 degrees. The wind is from the south at 6 miles per hour. The dew point temperature is 43. Relative humidity is 83 percent. The pressure is at 30.22, and the pressure is rising. Uh, here's the key word. Sprawling is the key word. It's a sprawling area of high pressure, just a big area of high pressure that's covering most of the country. Big, strong area of high pressure. Uh, along the edge of it, you, you remember here on the, where we were on uh, Tuesday, we had those very chilly readings overnight. They have had record lows down here in the eastern seaboard. 49 degrees in Washington this morning. That's as cold as it's ever been at this time of August. They're all excited about that. And there's some rain down here further south, three inches of rain the last three hours at Apalachicola, Florida. But where we are in the sprawl, we are getting some of the return flow around the high pressure area that's warming things up for us. And the sprawl <clears throat> is what's keeping all of the cloudiness away as if someone was standing there and just protecting us for the beginnings of the uh, Labor Day weekend. Isn't that a pleasant thought? 70 degree temperatures for us today. It's going to be into the 80s in the Dakotas today, and by tomorrow we should be touching 80 here. And the map features in our area for later on today show no particular intrusion of anything uh, to get in the way of that just, just splendid picture. So the details for today, just say a mostly sunny day in the Twin Cities with 70 to 75 degrees and southerly winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight clear and 54 to 58 with more southerly winds. Tomorrow mostly sunny and 75 to 80 with southerly winds. And for the balance of the weekend, possible evening showers by Sunday evening, chance of showers on Monday and, uh, well, who cares about Tuesday? It's, that's the, the Labor Day weekend, that's the focus for now. And Thanks. it looks promising, doesn't it? It certainly starts that way. Okay. Thanks. For you, those of you just joining us, a look at headlines. One person is in serious condition this morning after a shooting in Minneapolis overnight. Police and paramedics found the victim in city center. He had apparently walked in after being shot on Hennepin Avenue. He was taken to Hennepin County Medical Center. One suspect was taken into custody. Shortly after, police responded to a stabbing around the corner at First Avenue. A member of a band plane there was injured, but still able to walk to a waiting ambulance. No suspects were apprehended. Firefighters in Richfield were needed to battle an early morning fire. The fire began around 1.30 this morning in a house that was going to be moved. The house was in a lot at 77th and Colfax when the fire began in the attic and then spread to the roof. Officials say the origin of the fire looks suspicious in nature. And the Minnesota State Supreme Court has ruled in favor of Orville Skip Burnt. Burnt had been convicted three years ago in the arson death of his wife and three sons. He was released from prison in March. The Supreme Court has ruled that Burnt cannot be retried because the state has insufficient evidence. Farmers are getting a little relief from a storage problem this morning. And it's a busy day for horsemen at the state fair. Farm editor Les Heen is there live now with the details. Good morning, Les. Hi, Les. Yes, Dennis and Mary, as you can see right there, the, uh, it's a busy day here at the state fair. The last of the quarter horses, which have been warming up this morning for the state fair quarter horse, display this morning, the, the halter division of the quarter horses, that goes on at 7 o'clock. We'll tell you more about that in just a moment. But first, the grain storage problem is getting some more attention from the federal government this morning, and that is that the USDA has announced its rented space for a total of 2,000 barges for extra grain storage. Most of that 100 million bushel capacity will be used for corn, but even with the new storage, the USDA estimates that up to 5% of this year's harvest will be stored on the ground for a while. And a chemical used in weed killers may soon be banned by the federal government. That chemical is called Dinoseb. It's an ingredient in several herbicides used in soybean and potato fields. The chemical is used mainly to control broadleaf weeds, and it's under scrutiny now because it's caused birth defects in laboratory animals. And two of the railroads which have sent drought-stricken hay, uh, hay to the drought-stricken southeast say they won't be doing that anymore. Union Pacific and Burlington Northern say they're through providing free transportation. That comes after pulling about 1,300 carloads across the country. To encourage more shipments, though, Burlington Northern says it will offer a reduced rate for hay hauling to the southeast. And here at the State Fair, a busy day is ahead for quite a number of areas and some unusual ones. Specifically, there will be goat judging today at 8 a.m. and 7.30 in the sheep barn and 4-H poultry and rabbit competition in the judging area starting at 3 p.m. And also, it's Western Horse Day here at the State Fair. And for part of that, you can catch the Western Horse Show, and that starts this afternoon at 1 p.m. And as you can see back out here now, the arena has just emptied. The last of the quarter horses pulled out. That's because the quarter horse halter division starts in just tw a little over 25 minutes. Starts right around 7 a.m. There'll be 50 to 75 horses here, and it's going to be quite a show. And that's just one of a lot of things coming up here at the State Fair. Back to you. You look a little empty now, but I'm sure we'll have more people there before long. 
Oh yeah, in just just a half an hour there'll be a lot of people coming.